Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. When he discovers that his father is alive after 12 years of being missing, a teenager with special abilities embarks on an animal adventure to find him again. Today we will recap the story of the 2017 movie, Son of Bigfoot. In the middle of the forest, a chase takes place. The agents of the pharmaceutical industry Herco are trying to capture Dr. Jim with the help of hunting dogs, but the man climbs a mountain of rocks and manages to escape. However, Wallace continues to pursue the target in his helicopter and orders his agents to shoot tranquilizer darts at him. While running, Jim is cornered when he comes upon a waterfall. When he realizes he has nowhere to run, he chooses to give up his own life and throws himself into the water, dozens of meters high. His wife and young son are at home waiting for him, what they can't imagine is that from that day on Jim would never return. Twelve years later, Adam becomes a teenager and is teased by all his schoolmates about his hair. While waiting in detention, Tony and his gang stick gum in the boy's hair. When he realizes what is going on, the teacher sends Tony to the principal's office, and the delinquent promises that he will get revenge on Adam for being a snitcher. In the bathroom, while trying to remove the gum from his hair, the young man becomes enraged and his feet suddenly begin to grow. Due to this incident, his sneakers are destroyed and he has to use toilet paper to cover the damage. Adam walks down the school corridor and hears his classmates teasing him. Strangely enough, his hearing is better than ever and the boy can hear everything they are saying about him. Emma is the only student in the school who likes Adam and tries to get closer to him, but the boy always pushes her away because he believes that the young girl is just like all her other classmates. To make his day even worse, the boy comes across Tony's gang and tries to run away from them. However, the trio chases him to the gym, where they join forces to teach Adam a lesson. After pushing the boy from side to side and knocking him to the ground, Tony throws his backpack into the basket, as if it were a basketball. When Adam arrives home, his mother asks him what happened, and he states that he was injured while playing with his friends. However, Shelly knows that this is just an excuse and takes the scissors to cut her son's hair. That night Adam goes to sleep almost bald, yet when he looks in the mirror the next morning, his hair is back. The boy is startled by the sudden growth and runs to the bathroom to cut it all off again. When he realizes that the cut didn't turn out the way it should have, he grabs a hat to cover his head. Seeing him wearing that hat, Shelly informs him that it belonged to Jim, and Adam feels bad about it. His father had died 12 years ago, and since then, every time she remembers him, Shelly is sad. The boy returns the hat to his mother, who, after being frightened by the haircut she gave the boy, asks him to wear the hat to school. Meanwhile, in the hair co industry, Wallace advises his investors to turn in their cameras before entering the industry where the magic happens. Its scientists are working on a formula to make hair grow back so that bald or thinning hair people no longer need to wear wigs. Dr. Billingsley is the head of research and uses one of his trainees as a guinea pig to test his new product. Initially, the substance appears to be a success, but soon the boy's hair spontaneously bursts into flames, indicating that his experiment was a failure. In the principal's office, Tony and his classmates discover that they have been suspended for fighting with Adam. When the boy is called into the principal's office, he is informed that he is also suspended, even though he is the victim in that situation. The principal is very strict about the rules of the school and says that any kind of fight leads to suspension. The man also informs him that it is forbidden to wear any kind of hat inside that school and asks Adam to remove his cap. As he does so, the boy realizes that his hair has grown back and walks, frustrated, home. Along the way, he is again approached by Tony's gang and the bully steals his hat. He intends to rip the hat off, but Adam manages to break free and retrieves his father's hat. The boy then tries to escape from the delinquents, but is chased by them. Adam is trapped inside a tunnel, but he uses his big feet to get rid of the boys and quickly runs home. The trio pursues him and, before leaving, throws a rock through the window. When he goes to clean up the wreckage, Adam finds a box hidden under the floor. Inside are the letters that his mother and father have secretly exchanged over the past years. When Shelly comes home, the boy decides to confront her and asks her if she intended to tell him the truth. The woman then claims that Jim is, in fact, alive, but that is all the information she can give her son. Frustrated and disappointed with his mother, the boy looks at the address he found inside the box, along with the letters, and thinks of a plan to find his father. He sneaks out of his house in the middle of the night and tries to catch a ride on the road. After a few minutes in the rain, a truck driver stops and says he will take the boy to Route 99. That morning, when Shelly enters her son's room, she realizes that the boy is missing and soon realizes that Adam has gone out looking for Jim. When he arrives at his father's supposed address, Adam is confused, as there is nothing around but trees. When opening the mailbox, the boy finds a squirrel, which takes a letter and goes into the woods. Adam goes after him, but is too slow to keep up. After walking for a few minutes, the boy comes across a beautiful view, but his joy is short-lived. 
At that moment, he begins to be chased by a hairy creature. While trying to escape, Adam falls into a trap and rolls down the mountain. He stops in the middle of the road and is caught by a truck driver, who spots a furry creature rescuing the boy. When he arrives at the nearest diner, the man spreads the news that he filmed the Bigfoot with his truck's camera, and these rumors reach Wallace's ears. Convinced by Dr. Billingsley, the man sends all his agents to go after the truck driver. The guy with the mustache is forced to show where he got that Bigfoot footage and one of the agents finds Adam's backpack nearby. Wallace then sends two of his men to Shelley's house. When they realize that the place is empty, they break into the house and start searching. Meanwhile, the woman drives desperately on her way to her husband's address, because she believes that is where her son has gone. When Adam wakes up, he is confronted by a hairy monster and is frightened. The boy cannot believe it when the creature claims to be his father. However, when he spots the photos his mother has sent him over the past few years, he must accept the fact that he is Bigfoot's son. The man explains that he ran away because of a pharmaceutical company that wanted to turn him into a lab guinea pig. For the safety of his family, Jim needed to fake his death. Otherwise, Wallace would use his wife and son to blackmail him. Meanwhile, hair co-agents set up a roadblock to approach Shelley. The woman is taken in for questioning. When she and Wallace meet, the man inquires about her husband and Shelley states that he died many years ago. However, the businessman shows the video that proves that Jim is still alive and living hidden in the forest. Adam asks his father if he will ever turn into a hairy monster like himself, but the man says no, because Adam is already 13 years old and his hair has not yet begun to grow out of control. The boy has big feet, super hearing, and his hair grows at a fast pace, but his body is not covered with hair. It is as if he gathered only the good characteristics of a Bigfoot, including the healing touch. Jim used this ability to heal his son's injured leg after rescuing him from the road. Since Adam does not yet know his full potential, his father decides to take him to the forest to test his abilities. Together they break into a bear's cave and pull a raccoon out of its den. At this time, the boy's feet begin to grow wildly and his super hearing begins to bother him. Adam does not yet know how to control his own body, and Jim sets out to help him. Bigfoot teaches his son how to concentrate on a single sound at a time, and then shows him how to use his big feet to run fast. Adam crashes into a branch and the boy falls to the ground. At this moment, Jim helps his son up and informs him that he has an even more impressive ability. The man can communicate with animals. Just then, Steve, a red-headed woodpecker, appears and the boy is surprised to find that he can understand what he is saying. Then Trapper the raccoon appears along with his wife, Weecha, who is pregnant. As the small group walks through the forest, a gigantic bear approaches to attack them. The ferocious animal lets out its roar, and Jim goes to face it. However, to Adam's surprise, the animal is a great friend to his father and, despite its size, Wilbur is incapable of harming anyone. Just as they are introducing themselves, Tina announces the arrival of hunters in the forest. The team then races to put their plan into action. First, Tina destroys the bullets and puts them back in the rifle. Soon after, Wilbur appears to scare them off. The hunters then shoot the bear with their blanks, and the animal pretends to have been shot. The men become confident that the bear is dead and even take pictures with it. Suddenly, the animal gets up to attack them again. Frightened, the hunters run away, believing that this is a zombie bear. Probably, after this scare, those men will never return to the forest. Adam says that this was the coolest thing he has ever seen and says that he wants to make up for lost time with his father. They jump into the lake to cool off, and then race while dodging geysers. Later, when they return to the treehouse, Jim teaches his son to play the guitar he made himself. Hoping to get his father back, Adam asks Jim to go home with him, however, Bigfoot states that he really wishes he could go, but doing so would put them all in danger. The man says that when he was in medical school, he began to study the growth of his hair, looking for an explanation for what was happening to him. During his research, he discovered a very rare genetic mutation in his blood. This mutation causes Jim's hair to grow at a much higher rate and quantity than that of any other human. When Wallace learned of his experiments, he tried to hire him to work for his company. However, when Jim refused the offer, his laboratory was destroyed and all his research was stolen. From then on, the couple could no longer go anywhere without being followed. So, to keep his family safe, Jim decided he needed to disappear. Since they don't know that Adam has the same genetic mutation as his father, Herco has left the boy and his mother alone. While rummaging through the trash for food, the raccoon couple spots Shelly being taken away by Herco security guards. Father and son are having dinner when they receive the news that their wife has been taken away. To make matters worse, a platoon of armed men invade the forest at Wallace's command and his only mission is to find Bigfoot. To try to fix the situation, Adam runs towards the soldiers and asks them to take him back home. 
When he finds his mother, the boy tells her that his father is hiding in a tunnel under the waterfall. Wallace was monitoring the two and sends his men directly to the reported location. However, this was all just a trap, as Adam already knew that he and his mother were being monitored. As one of the agents descends the tunnel, a strong current of water throws him back up. Furious, Wallace orders his men to take Shelley home and takes the boy to serve as bait to lure Bigfoot. The man drives to a remote part of the forest and his agents are already in place to burn the place down. After leaving, Wallace pushes the vehicle, directly, into the flames in the belief that Jim will show up to save his son. Adam tries to run away, but the glass is too hot and the boy is not strong enough to break it. Just as he is about to pass out, his father appears and rips the roof off the car to get his son out. Now the young man is safe, but Jim has been hit by a tranquilizer dart and is captured. Wilbur shows up to help them, but can only rescue Adam, as the fire prevents him from saving his friend. While Bigfoot is being taken away, the boy faints, and when he wakes up, his forest friends say goodbye to him. They blame the boy for luring those men into the forest and leave in search of another place to live. Since part of the forest has been destroyed, Adam asks forgiveness for his mistake and states that he has a plan to rescue his father, but needs the help of his new friends. Tina is the first to take up the challenge, and then they all decide to help, because they know that if any of them were in danger, Jim would risk himself to save them. In one of Herco's laboratories, Dr. Billingsley studies his newest guinea pig. When Jim wakes up, he says he will soon be able to free himself from that place, but Wallace offers him a deal. If Jim resists, the man will use all his power and influence to make life as difficult as possible for his family. However, if Jim cooperates with the research and agrees to be the guinea pig in that experiment, Wallace will consider him his partner and his family will receive a lot of money. Worried about the future of Adam and his wife, he decides to give up his freedom and accepts his life as a large lab rat. When the last Herco vehicle leaves the forest, Adam and his friends catch a ride, but Wilbur is left behind. The clumsy bear jumps into the vehicle and hides in the ceiling along with the rest of the team. However, the agents realize that something is wrong and get out of the car to investigate. Since they find nothing, they return to the vehicle and continue on their way to the industry. On the way, Steve takes the opportunity to eat some insects that cross his path. Back at the lab, Dr. Billingsley reports that he has managed to extract the entire DNA sequence from Bigfoot. Again, the man tests his invention on the trainee and, as a result, all his body hair begins to grow immediately. The formula is almost ready. When they arrive at Herco, Adam uses his super hearing to try to locate his father, but Jim is still too far away and the boy cannot hear him. While Steve destroys the security cameras, the rest of the team approaches the lab. Trapper uses his fingernails to cut the glass, but his plan goes wrong and the entire glass is destroyed. At that moment, the security alarm goes off and the agents detect the invasion. Wilbur destroys the door to the security room and the watchman faints as he comes face to face with the bear. They get equipment to fight the guards, but Wilbur manages to take down almost everyone by himself. After dodging the tranquilizer darts, Adam is captured, and then his friends are surrounded. However, the bear shows up and rescues the boy. A new security team arrives on the scene and Wilbur stays behind, along with Tina, while Adam goes to look for his father. The young man uses his big feet to run to the lab while Wilbur is captured after receiving dozens of darts in his belly. When Adam finds his father, Jim asks the boy to leave and states that he will remain in the lab so that his family will be safe. Just then, Wallace appears and takes the boy outside. In the corridors, he sees his friends locked in cages and begins to think of a plan to free them. He triggers the fire alarm and the doors close. The sprinklers are activated and the security guards run away so that their wigs are not destroyed. When the doors open again, all the employees are running away from the supposed fire and Wallace is dragged out. Meanwhile, Adam opens Tina's cage and asks her to free all the others. The boy then returns to the lab and releases his father. Jim again states that he will stay in the lab, and Adam says that if his father doesn't go home with him, he will tell Wallace that he is also a Bigfoot. To prevent his son from being arrested, Jim decides to accompany him. Meanwhile, Shelly is at home awaiting Adam's arrival. When one of the security guards goes to the bathroom, he finds the hair the boy cut and informs Wallace that Adam is also a Bigfoot. Before leaving, Jim and Adam release all the gases in the building and intend to set it on fire. However, they get trapped inside and have to escape through the pipes. Just as they are about to reach the exit, Wallace and his men are there waiting for them. Shelly appears shortly afterwards and sees her husband being shot. Now that he knows that Adam is also a Bigfoot, the businessman no longer needs Jim and throws him over the cliff. Enraged, Adam takes his flare gun and fires it into the building, causing a huge explosion. At this point, the security guards run for cover and manage to save themselves before the bridge is destroyed. However, Wallace didn't make it. 
When Adam finds his father, Jim is severely injured. He is unlikely to survive in that state, but while mourning the loss of his father, Adam discovers that he is also able to use the healing touch. Within minutes, Jim is fully healed and his friends show up to congratulate the boy. Now he really can consider himself a Bigfoot. Just then, Wallace, who miraculously is still alive, shows up to spoil that special moment. He points a gun at the group, but Shelley appears just in time and manages to take him down. After 12 years, the family is reunited again and Trapper takes the opportunity to make fun of Wallace's wig. Weeks later, Wallace has been convicted and is in jail. In addition to having his father and mother home, as he has always dreamed, Adam now also has all his friends reunited. Trapper and Weech's daughters are born and add to the family. On the way to school, as usual, Adam is approached by Tony and his friends and tries to convince them to leave. But, the delinquents are determined to pick a fight, so Adam calls his friends to help him. Just then, Wilbur appears behind the kids and scares the hell out of them. The trio desperately runs away and has an accident on the way, as the Trapper daughters have removed all the bolts from their bicycles. When they enter the house, Emma appears and Adam invites her to go to school together. In that instant, his feet grow back and the girl says that Adam is different, which makes her like him even more. Apparently, Little Bigfoot has made a new friend and will no longer have to feel so lonely when he is at school. So, what did you think of this movie? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like it and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.